let's look at coping strategies, the ways that we respond to stress. So coping strategies are basically the multitude of different ways that we can respond to stressful situations, the way that we can respond to stressors, to deal with them, to not deal with them, but just basically our response. And these coping strategies can be either effective or ineffective. Effective will have a positive consequences for us, the people around us, and our work situation. The ineffective coping strategies will have negative consequences for us, the people around us, and the organizations that we uh, work for. Now there are three broad categories that we're going to look at of coping strategies. The first are problem-focused coping strategies, and that's where the focus is on the problem and trying to figure out what to do with the, with the problem. There's some problem causing us stress, and we're going to try to figure out what to do with that problem. But that's not the only way that people respond to uh, stress. There's also emotion-focused coping strategies. And emotion-focused coping strategies focus on our own feelings that we feel better. Generally, when we're under stress, we don't feel very good, especially when it moves from the eustress to the distress range. And some coping strategies are primarily focused on just making us feel better. The third category is avoidance-focused coping strategies, where we try to avoid the problem, the stressor, and um, uh, uh, try to make sure that it, it doesn't uh, uh, interfere in our lives, at least temporarily. What we're going to do to look at these different coping strategies, because there's actually a myriad of different ways of responding to stress, we're going to look at the cope inventory the types of coping strategies that are measured by this inventory, which is also, and we're going to do it by looking at a shortened version of the cope inventory called the brief cope inventory. We're going to look at the a um, uh, little bit more than a dozen types of coping strategies that people use. Now, in these inventories, we can actually measure what coping strategies people use for dealing with problems in their life. We give them a, a list of statements and ask, uh, how typical of you is it to respond with these in this way when you're stressed? And you give them a scale going from strongly disagree to strongly agree, and we can find out what coping uh, strategies are, are used the most. So we're going to look at the items that are on these coping strategies to understand the different coping strategies that the COPE and the brief COPE inventories measure. So the first one is active coping. And this is a problem-focused coping strategy because you're, you're trying to do something about the problem. So one of the items is, I've been concentrating my efforts on doing something about the situation I'm in. Or, I've been taking action to make the situation better. So it's this idea of actively getting involved with the situation to fix the problem. Now, this is a positive coping strategy. Trying to fix a problem is, is generally has positive outcomes. Now, you might not always be able to fix the problem, but in general, trying to fix problems is a good way of uh, dealing with uh, uh, stress. The second positive coping strategy is planning. Again, a problem-focused uh, coping strategy. And if you're planning, you can do things like, I've been trying to come up with a strategy about what to do, or I've been thinking hard about what steps to take. So this idea of planning how to solve the problem, figuring out a strategy to deal with it. So that's a, a, a problem-focused uh, coping strategy called planning. Another positive coping strategy is positive reframing. Now, this isn't necessarily problem-focused, but this is emotion-focused to get us to calm down so that we can think more clearly and look for good solutions to figure out what is the potential good that can come out of this situation. So phrases that characterize positive reframing are, I've been trying to see it in a different light to make it seem more positive. So looking for the positive things there. I've been looking for something good in what is happening. 
So this, this reframing things to see something positive in what's happening so that we can get our psychological balance back to uh, a better deal with the issue. Another positive coping strategy, which is emotion focused, is acceptance. I've been ex accepting the reality of the fact that it has happened. A lot of times when something bad happens, people say, no, I, I, I can't accept this. They deny that it happens. Another statement indicating acceptance is, I've been learning to live with it. So acceptance is important because until we accept the reality of a situation, we're not likely to respond to it in a constructive way. Another positive coping strategy, or at least it's usually positive, it can sometimes be negative, is, is humor, which can either be emotion focused or even sometimes avoidance focused. Um, and that's been I've been making jokes about it. I've been making fun of the situation, taking it a little lightheartedly, getting something positive out of it, making people uh, see positive things out of it, not being overwhelmed by the situation. Another positive coping strategy, which is usually positive, but not always, is religion, which can either be problem or emotion focused. And that the Brief Cope says, I've been trying to find comfort in my religion or spiritual beliefs, and I've been praying or meditating. Now, this can be positive or negative, depending on what you're doing, who you're praying to. There's all kinds of factors that are involved there. Um, but I personally believe, as a Christian whose life has been transformed by Jesus Christ, that if I pray to God and ask him for wisdom and ask to see his solutions, that his Holy Spirit will work in me and help me to know what to do, help me to know where to look for solutions, um, calm me down so that I can um, uh, come up with a good strategy for, for dealing with these things. I, and I really believe, and that's what I've experienced in my own life, that God does these things to, to help me uh, deal with uh, stressful situations. Another positive coping strategy is receiving emotional support from others. This is emotion focused to get us going in the right direction. And this occurs when things like, I've been getting emotional support from others occurs or I've been getting comfort and understanding from someone. If we've got this emotional support from other people, we can better deal with the solution. We've got the energy to come up with solutions, the strength to work through problems, the strength to continue uh, working through things. So that's receiving emotional support, but another positive coping strategy is receiving e instrumental support. And this is not emotion focused, but problem focused, getting actual help from people. So I, I, this is measured with statements like, I've been trying to get advice or help from other people about what to do. This is a very constructive thing to do in most circumstances is get another perspective, get another brain working on the, the problem so that you know what to do. I've been getting help and advice from other people. That helps us think through the issues to find the best solution to our problems. So these have been positive coping strategies that generally have positive outcomes. There are also negative coping, coping strategies that tend to have more negative outcomes than positive uh, outcomes. One is self-distraction. That's an avoidance focus. That's when I've been turning to work or other activities to take my mind off of things. Rather than trying to find a solution, you just decide you don't want to do it, so you get distracted by other things. I've been doing something to think about it less, such as going to movies, watching TV, reading, daydreaming, sleeping, or shopping, or any of a lot of other things that you can do to avoid thinking about a problem. That's self-distraction an avoidance-focused coping strategy that often has negative consequences because it doesn't lead to a, a very good solution of what we should do. Another negative coping strategy is denial. And this is an avoidance-focused one. This is, I've been saying to myself, this isn't real. I've been refusing to believe that it has happened. Now, I used to hear about denial, and I, used, and I would think, well, how can anybody in the world 
deny the reality of some situation. But as I've worked with more and more people, I found this is a fairly common coping strategy because people just don't want to um, admit to the reality of a situation. And they avoid the reality of a situation. And if they convince themselves that a situation's not real, even though it's obvious it is, they feel less stressed because they don't need to make any effort to make the situation better or to find a solution. Of course, they don't actually find a solution and the situation will typically get worse in that situation. So that's why we call it a negative coping strategy. Another negative coping strategy is venting. This is an emotion focused and this is an old Freudian idea that if we let out all of our negative emotions we'll uh, uh, feel better. So I've been saying things to let my unpleasant feelings escape. I've been expressing my negative feelings. Well, it turns out that expressing one's negative feelings, especially in strong ways, is not an effective way for dealing with things for two reasons. One is the more negative feelings we express, the more negative feelings we uh, uh, develop. And especially if we hurt somebody, we have to develop all kinds of reasons that that person should have been hurt. And so we end up damaging our relations. People don't want to be around people that are blaming them or complaining or yelling or screaming or going batty. Um, that, that prevents us from getting the emotional support that we need. So venting tends to be a pretty uh, uh, ineffective uh, way of um, coping with a, a, a stress, especially if we're doing it in a strong way that causes additional negative feelings to occur in our life, or if we're damaging relationships with people that we could be receiving social support from. Another negative coping, coping strategy, which is again always very negative, is substance abuse. And this is an emotion-focused uh, strategy. Rather than dealing with a problem, I'll take alcohol or drugs so I don't feel the problem. Um, that's a very short-term solution and usually causes, uh, brings about more problems than it solves. So the statements on the brief cope are, I've been using alcohol or other drugs to make myself feel better, or I've been using alcohol or other drugs to help me uh, get through it. Now there's an awful lot of people that use these, uh, these uh, uh, coping strategies. And they seem to be good because they make you feel better, but they don't help you deal with the problems, to deal with the stress, and to find a solution that will make your life, the life of people around you, and your work situation better. Other negative coping strategies include behavioral disengagement, which is a type of avoidance focus. That's been, I've, I've been giving up trying to deal with it, or I've been giving up uh, the attempt to cope. Just whatever I give up, I'm not going to uh, deal with uh, this uh, solution uh, anymore. Or self-blame. Rather than focusing on the problems, I focus on the negative things inside of me. So statements like, I've been criticizing myself, or I've been blaming myself for things that have happened. Now that's, that's really easy to, to do, especially when you are the cause of, or at least one of the causes of the negative things that have happened. But simply blaming yourself for it is not going to bring about uh, solutions. Now, as a Christian, I say this is where Christianity really comes in uh, uh, in a useful way. Um, the Bible says that if we are... Uh, uh, if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just, and he will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So when I mess up and I really do things that are bad, and I realize that I'm part of the problem, not the solution yet, um, I, I, just, I bring it before God and I ask forgiveness for that and receive his forgiveness and say, okay, now what do you want me to do about this? How can I make the situation better? and move into the problem-focused uh, coping strategy and try to figure out what I can do to make the, the bad situation into something good.